Oh, oh, Randy, I thought I heard somebody out here. It's a fun weekend to racing boat, but it really cuts a, a pretty picture sitting on our mooring. Oh no, it's a really neat boat. Underway, the boat is going to fly. Hi there, this is Captain Q. Join us as we travel hither and yon to show you some great deals on some really interesting boats and maybe learn just a little bit with each one. <laughs> oh, oh, Randy! I thought I heard somebody out here. This is this is my home right now, so if you don't mind, I, I'd like a little peace and quiet. Oh, sorry. I'll talk to you later. I'll come back later. Oh, but wait a minute. While you're here, you know what? Uh, there's a I got a boat right across the Sparkman and Stevens. Oh, really? Yeah. Come on. Let me let me uh, let me turn off the stove here. Okay, stove's off. All right, we're all set. Follow me. This boat uh, is a Sparkman and Stevens design was born around 1974 uh, herself. The line was started a little bit before by, uh, called the Yankee Boat Company. And they're out in California. They got Sparkman and Stevens to design them a boat or two. But take a look at this from down here and see what you think. It's kind of crowded, but is that oh, yeah. pretty impressive? Oh yeah. Wow. Nice finish on the hull. That's a maroon. It's one of those deep maroons. From a distance, it looks like a natural mahogany hull. It's really a, a lovely finish. And uh, okay. Reminds me of the Harvard Crimson color. It is a Harvard Crimson color. You could take this to the Harvard Yale game, park it outside, and have a uh, tailgate. This is an early SNS design. This is Sparkman Stevens have been around since I don't know the early 30s when. Uh, Ola and everybody helped out with Ranger, the J-boat. And then they, they designed a number of other famous boats, like the Raid, that, that won the Transatlantic Race, and, and uh, Stormy Weather, and all these other, other great one-design boats. They were all wooden boats. The same hull, uh, almost identical hull, with some minor changes, was uh, extended and used by Nautor uh, to build their Swan 38. And when they did close down the factory, they sold the molds to Catalina and Catalina turned it into the Catalina 38. So it's a good haul all around, a good design all the way around. This, is a, this got changed a little bit with Nautor. Uh, some of the early designs, they were still figuring out how to handle a fin. This has this little swept back mode to it. I think uh, Nautor's is, is maybe cut off here and just a little different shape uh, to the keel. And then they had a little bit of a bustle build up back in here, uh, again for flow. And this actually is probably considered part of it in this boat, but maybe a little bit more, uh, just to give it a little more shape aft and allow it to, to uh, maybe go downwind a little better. Here's our triple-bladed uh, max prop, and complete with a shark cutting tool right ahead of it to trim off the lines. And of course, there's a new zinc here and a new zinc up here. This is what they look like after they've just been put on. They just look like nice smooth metal. Very nice, very smooth hull, very nice finish on the hull. I'm noticing um, some tumble home here, like the FNC. Yep, there was all part of the uh, early IOR design was rolling tumble home into it, and it had to do with a measurement rule, uh, and uh, it's very much like the FNC exactly. You can see it right in here. Uh, it, it is sort of it adds a nice flavor to the boat. The boat looks nice, and it, it will help its stability a little bit. It does give you a little more volume inside, and you'll see this piece trailing off here to help with the flow of water coming coming back. But this is so narrow back here, the whole section. Newer boats today, they found what they like to do is they make this very wide aft. They'll carry the beam very far, back to about here, for example. And if they're so wide that the helmsman can't stand in the middle of the boat and steer it. So what do they do? They give him one steering wheel here and one steering wheel on this side. It has a PHRF rating or an IOR rating? It's about 124, somewhere in that range. And the IOR rating, about a 27. I'm looking at that cove stripe and thinking that's kind of your jam. What do you think? Do we like gold cove stripes? Uh, we love it. Uh, I'm just checking. Hey, we do. What do you say we head up topside, huh? Let's do it. This is uh, pretty cool up here. Uh, Sea Dog found the place. She thinks it's just swell. She wondered who you are, though, but that's okay. You're a good dog. I would think she would know by now. Oh, yeah. 
This is a, like a sports car from what we've seen so far. We've seen some really interesting cruising boats. You want to hit the line going. You, you do a good old... Uh, the Vanderbilt the start? The Vanderbilt start, right. Yep. Five minutes away from the line, five minutes and or four minutes and 92 seconds back up to the line. Anyway, uh, hit the line, strap the jib in. She's a speedster. We're sitting on a little speedster right now. And everything is set up for the good old days of racing. Uh, they've done a great job with it. They've really thought out the cockpit. This is a racing cockpit. Look at the size of the winches, the primary winches. It really is wonderful. So well, if we, this is a sports car, what's the analogous sports car? 1976 Corvette. <laughs> Fiberglass, old style, good body to it, uh, good speed. Probably wouldn't keep up with a new Corvette, we know that. That would be it, and it's a lot of fun to drive no matter how fast. You can go, you're only going 65 miles an hour anyway. But this boat will go the equivalent of 65 miles an hour sailing. It's just really nice. Now, if you notice here, I've got a lot of room behind the helm um, because <laughs> we don't have a wheel in place. Uh, we would have lots of room to sit and steer on either side of the boat. Uh, if I were down to leeward, like so, I've got a good shot right up through the slot between the main and the Genoa and the wheels right here. And it's fun just to be back here and drive these boats. And you have to understand on a boat like this, what it's like when suddenly you trim the sails in, you harden up on the wind, and she puts her shoulder down into the, into the, into the next wave and just bears off and takes off like a shot. And you, you almost feel the acceleration, like a, almost, like, almost like a sports car. Competitively, you would have a lot of fun with this. It's not just the boat. It's spending some time getting the boat ready. That bottom has to be just as smooth as this piece of chrome right here. You have to have the right propeller on the boat. You have to have a perfect set of new sails, and you have to have a crew willing to make the extra trim when it's necessary. You know, another inch in on the sheet or an inch up in the halyard, whatever. And then you get everything you can out of the boat, and you'll find that old boats can match or beat newer boats sometimes. We would probably have a little bit of a dodge getting around the wheel and out to the cockpit. Uh, you know how we like lockers in, in the cockpit, right? Well, we have a nice big locker here. And this boat is particularly well painted and cleaned up, and it's got my, my little spring-loaded... Uh, oh, your favorite. I like those. I like those. I think you just need one, but they've got two here. The non-skid is certainly grippy, uh, but it's not overly so. It won't tear the, the cloth off the bottom of your uh, racing shorts. Oh, oh, excuse me. Now, one, one little fault we just noticed here is the rudder post uh, comes up right behind the pedestal here. It's a good place for it, but it is something to deal with on a regular basis. Uh, here we are up in the crew pit. One's gonna be tailing in the winch and cleaning it off. Somebody else is gonna be handling the traveler uh, for your uh, main sheet. And these will probably have a short boom. I imagine the boom is gonna come to just about here. Very nice recessed here. That was a, a good touch. And there are line controllers here. The line's been taken off for the uh, winter. Uh, up on the dashboard here, you see the typical uh, Raymarine instruments. I like how the labels match your suspenders. They do, don't they? Do they still match if I turn this way? <laughs> no. <laughs> the one way labels. And this, this bridge deck is very big, and you'll see why this bridge deck is so big when we go below. Reasonably wide decks, these are, these are very nice. And the two tone with the cream non skid against the little white trim in the waterways, the cabin sides, it's very subtle and it looks great with the maroon hull. The base of the mast where we have a number of blocks here uh, to lead off to winches uh, here forward or aft for additional control. So our good old buddy, Mr. Durade, and forward of that, this is called a deck prism, and it captures the light and then disperses it throughout the cabin. It really throws a lot of light into the cabin, just that little narrow piece of, of glass. Now here's a, uh, another track, and that'll be to adjust the staysails. And this would be a track for that. Not necessarily for a cutter rig, but just for off the wind sailing. And this boat actually is so pretty that a lot of people may confuse it for the Nautor Swan 38. And everybody likes to be confused with the Nautor Swan. It's like me being confused with Clark Gable. Or was it Alfred E. Newman? <laughs> One of the two. Anyway, let's take a, a peek below. What do you think? Yeah, let's go. Let's check it out. So, what do you think? Oh, wow. Very rich, very warm uh, interior work here. 
Um, the owner it, it likes to uh, do his own woodwork and so forth, and he's added all this mahogany finish down inside, and it really has gone a long way to warming up this boat. He's reinstalled the overhead, and it's all gleaming bright varnish. You know what we do like down here, Randy? What is that? Oh, it's fantastic. A wood stove. Yeah, it's a wood stove. That puppy will just cook you out of this boat. It will dry up the whole boat. And it's a very nice installation. There's a nice big steel plate up there to protect the upper piece of wood and also give it, reflect the heat. And so what kind of wood do you feed in those, by the way? Uh, well, you can use charcoal briquettes. You can use uh, just pieces of uh, flotsam and jetsam wood, you know, uh, uh, the odd little chips, wood chips. And you can damp it down so it will burn for quite a long time. We, we love these at Maine. It's just the best thing. You need one of these and you need radar and then you can take your boat to Maine. A nice mast uh, hole here with a lot of little blocks around it and that comes down and sits on a very neat mast step down here and it has a big screw on it. And the idea behind that is to help adjust the, um, uh, the foot of the mast, either fore or aft. This is very nice. Here are the keel bolts. There are, what do we say, 13 keel bolts here? Yep. Uh, and these are like one inch keel bolts and they're all fresh and the threads are fresh and I think that's all just been redone. Uh, you see the keel, the grounding for uh, lightning and so forth, but that is really nice to see. Super tidy and super strong. And those keel bolts combined with chain plates, which are massive and huge bolts and doubled up. And that actually accommodates two. There's an upper and a lower set of bolts there because you have the upper head uh, shroud and the lower shrouds all going to the same spot. They're not separated as they are in other boats. That allows them to play with the mast more, the bend of the more mast, having those two shrouds in line. A sea dog, I told you not to get up there. We've got a nice big pilot berth here uh, on both sides, and these are really wide. I know I'm going to be very comfortable. A little memory foam maybe. And there is your storage. This comes out and for the time being, the owner elected just to screw it shut because it's just far more burst than he needs. He doesn't need to have it sliding around to do anything. So uh, same thing on the port side. It's totally symmetrical. Uh, here's a lee cloth for the lower berth. And if the boat's filling that way, it's on the lee side too. Coming aft here, the fun space here. This is the, the navigation table. It's a little low under here for my, for my head. Uh, I just found that out to prove it. Very neat, very tidy. Uh, the VHF radio, we got some music here. Uh, is all his battery house controls and so on. This is a nice space. It's not as big as some, but it's pretty big. Actually, it goes in there quite a ways. Now we have the red light that you want to use at night when you're racing and sailing and you do your chart work. And so when you go on deck, your eyes will not be uh, shut down completely from being in bright light. So your eyes are, your pupils are open right now because this light's not uh, doing anything to you particularly. We've got pretty good hand holes in this area. I like this. Uh, one here, one here. You can get yourself up and out of there easily. Oop. Well, we're looking back here is the result of the big bridge deck that we found on deck. What's happened here, a lot of boats, they would, they would have sort of a bulkhead here and they'd have a doorway and a doorway here. And also, do you remember the coffin quarter berths on the Cal 40? They were like little narrow boxes that you could, you sort of had to be a monkey or a snake to slide into, you kind of held onto it and then jumped into it. Well, <clears throat> this is a little better arrangement, uh, and I'd say a lot better. We'll give it the measurement test. Oh, yeah, very good. All the way down, I can go. Oh, I am dead down. Randy, you know what happens when I get in this position, right? Yeah, I have to get you a blanket. I Give me a blanket. I'm lying on top of the uh, lee cloth here. And that can hook right up, and you'd be snug as a bug in the rug. Is there anything else you've noticed in my cabin back here? Well, this little red thing that you would... This is a Westerbeek diesel engine, and uh, the, the boat is clean. The man is, is meticulous with maintaining the boat, and uh, this, is, this, this boat is, is very clean, and she probably hasn't had a lot of leaks. I'm afraid you were raised on another big boat that had sort of a lot of little oil coming out of different orifices <laughs> On the engine. It had a diesel aftershave. It did that. You, you went home and everybody always knew where you had been for the last three days. And the reason it's sitting here like this, uh, it looks so like a hot rod in front of, you know, the way guys drive around with their hoods off the uh, hot rods. But it's really uh, there because he's just pulled the box apart uh, for us to see. But what else do we notice about this is the accessibility. We've talked about accessibility. 
nothing like this have we seen. I mean, the whole engine is right here. So great access to the engine. And also when you're lying back here, this will, there'll be a little bit of a table here for you uh, in, your, in your cabin, if you will, uh, which will be the top of the engine. And if you're motoring somewhere, there's going to be some ambient heat pouring off the engine, and it'll keep you warm and dry and cozy back here. Now, the owner is presently uh, recovering the ceilings on the boat here with uh, some Naga Beast. And uh, it's not quite finished. It needs to be tightened up in a few places. But right here, we can see the steering mechanism, the steering quadrant back there, and the wires leading to it. And if there's ever a failure with the steering, if there's ever a failure with the steering, you can get right to the mechanism and, and take care of it. So that's, that's very handy. The other thing, too, it's always nice to look at and check out from time to time, if you can, are the engine motor mounts. And that's these pieces right down here. There's four of them, like so. And that's where you, that's where you balance the whole engine uh, so it's vibration-free and not driving the shaft cockeyed. A lot of times you'll get in on boats, and those will be moist and damp, and they'll be all rusty and tired and worn out. But these look, these look pretty good. Here is uh, a picture, a nice view of the V-drive. This drive comes down from the engine into a gearbox, which changes the direction of the spinning shaft this way so you can uh, lead the propeller further aft. This allows you to put, here's your engine, this allows you to put the engine further back in the boat where you want it for stability and for racing form. Otherwise, you would have to move the engine up here, get rid of the V-drive, and have a shaft going, that just one shaft going out. Now, in this case, that would eat up a lot of the cabin space, too. Here we are in the galley, and it's small, it's compact, uh, it would service the racing crew uh, very well. Uh, we've got uh, canned pot storage down here uh, in that little locker. Same sort of thing behind uh, here for a ton of dry food, glassware, plates, and so on. I have a place to live. Great big counter space for sandwich making. A lot of sandwiches when you're racing. But in this particular spot, normally you would find a stove. The owner has chosen not to have a stove in here and uh, just leaving that empty and uh, bringing on a little two burner when he needs it to, to do some camping with, basically. You know what else you could, you could bring on here? Oh, uh, yes, exactly right. You tell me. Sea swing. Oh, a sea swing would be nice. A C swing would be very nice. C swing I'd mount probably right about oh right about here. Get any more. Heat it up. Love it. Love it. No, I don't. No. <laughs> anyway, this is very nice. And all the, the uh, uh, little under sink storage down here. There's a little locker uh, below the sinks. And the owner's done a nice job on his varnish work. And this gizmo. This is an interesting gizmo because I just found this in the sink. I have absolutely no idea what it is, but it's a thing that fits into the sink. It's a little drying rack, right? Well, you think that's a drying rack? Yeah. But it's sort of convoluted. Well, it gives you options for different size plates. Okay, well, we'll put this out to the gang. What do you think this is, Troops? It's beyond your captain right now to tell you what that really is. <laughs> a captain that has not washed a lot of dishes. That's not entirely <laughs> true. That's not entirely true. Now, here we have two very deep sinks. I can almost dive into them. Oh, my God. They're very deep. Forward. We have a head here, and uh, it has a shower grate on the floor, but uh, we don't see any signs of a hand no shower. shower because yeah. there's uh, no hot water. Overhead, he's got a new liner in there, and uh, this is a uh, this is a portable potty. A por uh, you you actually uh, do your work, and then when you are finished, you take the bottom half home and and empty it. Uh, they are very nice, though, from the standpoint that you don't have to have a holding tank then and holding tanks just generate smell. There's just no two ways about it. And once you're in there, nice sliding door, keeps the companionway open. And uh, here we are forward. Again, 6'2 height underneath the hatch here. This is very nice, very nice. A lot of room up here. And uh, I'll just, I'll, do you probably think we should measure these berths? It looks like I could use some measuring. These are so long. Ah, I need to grow some more to fit this, but this is plenty wide and the end of the burst are not completely pointed. And that, that's a small point, but it just means uh, uh, it, it's, not, it's not six foot two everywhere. <laughs> oh, that hurts. That makes you so mad. Uh, oh, geez. Randy just took a hit on the, 
on the skylight here. It sounded like an empty coconut. <laughs> it's very pretty. I do like the wood. Again, remember, we're on a 38-foot racing boat. Now, when Randy gets up here, he's going to take a look down the length of the cabin. You get a real sense of how much room is in this boat. Uh, it's really quite fetching that far back, isn't it? All in all, it's a really neat boat. Well, Randy, thanks again for coming here to Southern Maine. What we looked at today was a really cool old sports car of a boat. It's a Sparkman Stevens Yankee 38 built in 1974. It's classic Sparkman Stevens. The cabin house, the way he's melted it into the foredeck, sharp entry of her bow, uh, the raised counter of her, of her and her stern. It really cuts a, a pretty picture sitting on her mooring. Underway, the boat is going to fly. With this boat, more so than any others that we've looked at, really is a racing boat. And there's nothing more fun than racing your boat against your, your neighbors and so forth. It's also a great way to learn how to sail really well because you will sail in heavier air and you will sail when it's really light. I picture a pair of couples that, that just want to go for a weekend race in Casco Bay, head down east to Booth Bay, any of the local races, and really have a great time. I like the boat. I'd like to own the boat, put it on a mooring, get some friends to say, hey, we're going to go bang around the harbor and have a good time sailing and racing. I know you always ask the question. I'd love a rating. Right here. I know I've seen pictures of the boat floating, so I know it floats. We're going to give it a 10. And I'm going to give it a uh, extra three and a half points because it really is not a cruising boat, but it, uh, in, in, in the purest sense, but it's really a fun racing boat. And one more point for just being so darn pretty. So 14 and a half for our 38 foot Yankee. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. That we're having too good a time of doing these things. So uh, you can hit the bell or not. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes a little bit early. That's pretty cool, previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now and I'm gonna find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> <laughs>